Hi, it's Kim here. Today I'm bringing you a process video for an off the page project I have made for 49 and Market. This project uses a, a selection of products from both the Vintage Artistry Sage collection and the Vintage Artistry Blush, Blush collection, along with some other flowers, stamps, and other products, which I'll go through as I work through this video. So this frame uses a gold ornate gold frame that was in my stash and it is an 8 by 10 inch frame on the inside of that gold section. I simply removed the glass and the um, mat that was as part of the frame and I'm using the backboard from the frame to build my project on. So you've just seen me glue a piece of paper to that backboard that was vintage artistry sage delicate paper and now i am creating a center panel which will sit on that back panel and i'm covering it with vintage artistry sage papillion paper now the center frame or center section is created using two pieces of chipboard which I have simply cut to five inches by seven inches size and I have glued them together. I'm using a soft matte gel to attach the paper to the backboard and the paper to that center section. And then once they're a little bit dry, I am trimming them with a craft knife around to trim them down to size. And then I'm covering them with a clear gesso. This is just to seal these papers because at this stage, I'm not 100% sure what I am going to do on them and I want to make sure they're protected if I add further mixed media to them. Uh, the paper did lift a little bit at the top. I hadn't let it dry enough before I started adding the gesso to it. So I just put some gesso behind it to hold it and I put my gesso bottle on top of it to hold it down as it dried and it was fine. So I've done the same with this centre section, um, simply trimming the paper around it. Now I'm going to cover it with clear gesso um, so that it is also sealed. And I also um, seal around the edges because again, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to be doing. So I actually seal the edges of those chipboard, bo chipboard centre section as well. Now, these are the pieces. These are not 49 and Market pieces, but I'm using them in this project. I don't end up using the doily um, to the left, even though I paint and prepare it. I'm currently um, covering these pieces. So these, these bits that I'm um, painting with white, heavy white gesso at the moment are acrylic pieces. So uh, the, a frame, a heart and a key. And I did forget, but I come back to it later, is um, wings that go on the heart, on the, on the centre heart. So I've painted all of those with heavy white gesso and set them aside to dry. And now I'm going to start work on layering up some detail behind the centre panel. So I am using pieces from the Vintage Artistry Sage Nouveau Ephemera Stack. And I am using some of the larger pieces from that to create layers behind that center piece. And now I'm using some pieces from the Vintage Artistry Blush Collection Pack laser cuts. So in all the collection packs, there's these sheets of laser cuts, which are just amazing with not having to fussy cut items. And I have picked out some of the doily pieces. So they're like, they look like layered pieces of paper and a doily and some of the flowers. And I have tucked them down the left and right edge. And then I have a couple of tags there, which I have tucked at the top. So this is just creating that layer of interest that will sit behind that centre panel. And now because I'm really happy with that, I'm just gluing each of those down. So it creates one piece. So it makes it easier for me to add some more layers in here, which I'm going to add with some of the um, burlap ribbon um, so that's a 49er market product the burlap ribbon and also with some gauze and you'll see that in a moment so I'm just sticking all of these pieces together but not sticking the actual chipboard piece on the top yet so this is just all the layers that are going to go behind 
that chipboard piece and I'm just using a strong wet glue. So this is a Stamperia strong wet glue to hold those pieces together. Um, I'm just popping some little sequins out of that laser cut sheet. So that's the blush collection laser cut sheet again. They, they have um, all these very cute little sequins on them, which look really real. And at the end of this project, I add some sparkly glitter paste to them. And yeah, they look really like um, real um, sequins. So now I'm adding, now I'm starting to work on the chipboard and acrylic pieces and I am simply adding waxes to those. Now I'm using a combination of white gold, vintage gold, pearl and a copper colour to these pieces so that they have some variation in colour to them. So I'm just using a coarse paintbrush at the moment to add the first coat of white, no, vintage gold to these pieces. And I use that vintage gold on the hearts and the frame and the key. And then on the acrylic heart and wings, which go in the centre of the oval frame, I'm using a pink colour, which is very similar to the flowers that I'm using. And those flowers are in the passion pink colour. And so that pink matches with them. And then I highlight with some pearl wax at the end of that so with the magic of video I have I have done all of those coats of color and now I'm just adding some copper color to this oval frame just to highlight some of the texture in that frame so as I said these aren't 49 and market pieces but everything else in this project is and I'm also just adding a little bit of that copper around the outside you can see there there's like a silvery color on those hearts and that's the white gold and then I'm just adding the copper to the very edge. So this variation of colour just adds interest to these items. And there's the pearl going onto the wings, just to give them a slight variation in that pink. And some copper onto the key to highlight the details. Um, you should be able to see that those variations in colour when I do the close-up shots at the end of this video. So what I'm doing now is I'm using the centerpiece layers that I created before to work out where to put some rub-ons. So I have got rub-ons from the Vintage Artistry Coral and Natural Rub-on Transfers and I am using the natural colour from that pack to add some doily rub-ons and some flower and lace rub-ons around the back that will layer and peek out from behind um, the layers in in that stack that I've created. So you can see that I'm using the stack to get the placement about where I want to put those rub-ons. And now I am adding some clear crackle paste around the outside of this backboard. So I'm not using any that will be, be underneath that centerpiece, but I've just smeared it around the edges. Now there is one thing, uh, crackle paste or this particular crackle paste that I used won't stick to rub-ons because they're quite shiny and smooth when it dries. So it actually just flakes off, but it stuck to all the paper parts fine. I didn't know that about crackle paste until this project. So what I'm doing now um, is I'm going to use a 49 and Market stamp called Springtime Harmony and it's a text stamp with some leaves and a butterfly on it and I'm using a brown permanent ink to roughly stamp that around the outside edge of this piece because once the frame and the hearts and the flowers are added to this piece you'll only see little tiny bits and pieces. So I have added rough stamping around just to get that texture and then I have inked the edges of this board and now I'm going to add a texture paste through a diamond stencil over the back of this um, centerpiece and then I set that aside to dry. Now I'm going to back the frame because I want to lift it. Um, it's going to be sitting on top of those chipboard hearts and so because it will be lifted a bit I need a back on it so that the acrylic heart can sit 
at the same height as the frame. So you can see that I'm, I'm looking at that there. And now what I'm doing is putting some soft gel into the bottom section of the frame and I'm going to add some art stones and mini art stones to the bottom of the frame to give texture so it looks like they're they're caught in the bottom of the frame so not the whole way around just the bottom section so um, I you can do this with gel or you can do it with glue so it's up to you as long as they stick firmly into the bottom of that uh, frame so you can see now that the texture paste is dry um, and so now I'm using some pink watercolour paint. In a, it's a soft vintage pink colour to add some colour to that texture paste. And I'm also adding a little bit of water so that the paint runs. I don't want it too heavy. I just want a, that I want the texture paste to just have a light pink colour. And then I'm going to also add little touches of gold watercolour paint to that as well, just to give some variation in colour to to the pink and that pink's basically a lighter shade than the passion pink flowers that will be added towards the end of this project so I've just decided also that I'll use that same pink and I'm coloring those art stones that are now dry that we put into the bottom of the frame so um, they're dry I'm adding the pink paint and then towards the end of the project I'll give it a light rub with uh, pearl wax and it will just highlight those art stones beautifully so you can see here i am adding a little bit of gold paint um, so gold is the accent color that i'm using throughout this project and so that little bit of gold paint just adds a bit of shimmer most of this ends up getting covered up but at the time i don't know where exactly everything's going to go so i just want to make sure that it's got those details so if it does show the details can be seen so now i'm using this burlap ribbon you can use any hessian or burlap behind here if you haven't got the 49 and market burlap ribbon and i understand that it has been discontinued now so any burlap or textured sort of fabric naturally looking fabric will work behind here um, so again a really strong wet glue to hold that fabric otherwise it will fall off and you don't want that um, so I'm just putting plenty of that glue in and I actually then trim around the burlap to make sure that it's just peeking out. Um, I think I've cut that out of the video. No need for you to see that, but I just distress off those edges. That's where burlap's great. And I'm using gauze at the moment and that's going to sit on top of the stack between the chipboard piece and those stack of papers that we created. So you can see there that now I'm using that same strong wet glue to stick that onto the back of that chipboard and then I'm sticking it onto the whole stack that I created. So now we have the chipboard piece with the texture paste and the watercolour paint. We have the hessian, oh, sorry, the gauze, then the layers of ephemera pieces, then the hessian and then that's being all stuck onto the backboard which has some rub-on pieces and the crackle medium and the crackle medium is clear but it just when you see this project in real life the crackle in that background peeking out over that beautiful sage paper is just beautiful really is lovely so I'm using um, a soft gel medium to put down these chipboard hearts so I've staggered them and they're just sitting off the edges so again that gives another layer around the edges of this um, center piece and then I'm putting on the um, center oval frame and I'm just putting a little bit more watercolor paint around the edge of the frame above the art stones and now I am attaching this heart molded heart and the wings again using a very strong glue to attach those and plenty of it and once it dries uh, it will stick very well and now I am going to create a cluster of flowers and leaves and I have used spring uh, sorry the royal spray flower in passion pink royal posies flower in passion pink and in ivory and majestic bouquet in ivory so that's the combination of flowers that I've used the good thing about this project is if you don't like pink green and gold you could make it in any color combination from the vintage artistry 
um, color collections. There's some absolutely gorgeous colors in there and lots of 49er market flowers to coordinate. So you could choose any of those other colors and get the same effect as this project um, in the color that takes your fancy. So you can see here that I am just um, layering up these flowers and making sure that they're all jammed in nice and tight together because that gives the texture and interest with these clusters of flowers. Again, I'm using that really strong wet glue to do my flower clusters. Everybody has a different preference, but I really do like this glue um, to hold flowers. Once it grabs, it's very strong. So I'm just pulling out um, a few more flowers. So it's important with flower clusters, I think you get the most interest when you use a combination of large, medium and small flower sizes. And I also love the stems with the baubles on them and the different leaf textures that are in the 49 and Market uh, flower packs. And so I've used a combination of different leaves, different um, baubles on stems or buds on stems and different sorts of flowers with different insides. But they all work together because of the colour con combination works really well with the colours that I chose for this project. And now I'm also putting a complementary little cluster of flowers in the top right corner of this centre section. Um, I originally was going to put a paper, uh, a clip of one of the brass clips up here, but I forgot to attach it um, when I stuck everything together and then I couldn't get it in. Um, and anyway, I decided that the flowers would look better up there than having put the clip anyway. And then I have used some little butterflies from the laser cuts in the blush collection pack. And I have put one of those in the top right corner there. And then I'm going to put another one of them towards the bottom left corner on the, on the large white flower. Then that key that we colored with the waxes, I've just used that strong wet glue to attach it on top of the flower cluster. These are just some of the little wishing bubbles so I have put an I love you in that top flower cluster and then I'm just adding some of the little pink ones around on that um, bottom layer of this frame so the backboard and I've stuck two clusters of three of those wishing bubbles in the background there and when you see the project in real life you do see those and it's just another texture um, in, in the many textures and layers that are in this project. And, and it is textures and layers that add interest. So uh, I set this aside to dry for the night and then got a wee bit excited, added some more art stones and actually added some glitter around the outside of the flowers and then forgot I wasn't filming. So I'm just pointing those out to you. And now I'm going to show you how I do the glitter. Um, because I think the glitter on the edge of the flowers just allows you to customise. So I'm using a German glass glitter for this particular project, but you could use any glitter or pretty sparkly thing that you've got. So what I do is put a bit in a container, add some wet glue to it until it forms like a paste. So I use um, my art glitter glue. It's very important that whatever glue you choose dries completely clear um, and non-tacky. So you just mix up a paste and then use a paintbrush and spread it around where you want it. So I've just basically worked my way around each flower, adding touches of glitter to the outsides of the petals. Now, because I also added a bit more um, art stones, I decided it needed more texture under the heart. I just had to paint those up again. And now what I'm doing is adding some pearls. So I'm just adding drips of glue and then different size pearls all over this flower cluster. So I have a larger pearl, medium and small, and I'm just adding a variety of those around this cluster in both the large bottom cluster and the small cluster in the top right corner. Again, those pearls just add another dimension to the flower cluster and it's very pretty. Um, I, as being the mother of a son, I often do boy layouts, which you will have seen that I have posted. And so sometimes when I get to do something very girly, I go very girly. So I don't think I mentioned at the start, this is actually a project for my mum who hasn't been very well lately. And because of COVID, I haven't been able to go 
home to Australia to see her. And it's been, it's been pretty tough because I really would like to be there with her. So I've made this special project for her and I'm sending it to her in Australia to let her know how much I'm thinking about her. Um, and I, I hope she loves it as much as I did when it was finished. So I'm just adding the last of these pearls. And then off camera, I added some more sequins to the background. So around where that large cluster of flowers is. And I just added those again with that clear art glitter glue. Whenever you're adding any of these embellishments, it is really important that, as I said before, please use a glue that dries completely clear and non-tacky, otherwise it will collect all the dust. Um, and that art glitter glue is my favourite for this. So once I've stuck all these pearls down, um, there is going to be some still photos of this project so you can see some close-ups. Um, please, if you have any questions about my process, leave a comment down below and I will check them and I will come back and answer any questions that there are. And I really hope that you enjoyed this project for 49 and Market and the beautiful products that I've used to make this frame. Thank you.